I'm Skip West, president of Max Innovations and also a trustee of the CTA Foundation and a longtime member of the CTA Board of Industry Leaders. Um, with me, I've got Liz Hamburg. Liz has a really awesome and cool company called Can Do. So Liz, tell us what is Can Do? <laughs> well, we're all about making sure that older adults feel like they can do it. And we're helping with that. So we are doing tech support and training specifically designed for older adults. And everything is remote right now. So we are providing remote tech support and lessons nationwide. And that's everything from helping someone set up a new device and figure out actually what device they need and putting on things from accessibility features to customized content to help decrease social isolation. And we're also doing that really important support. So teaching people how to use their technology and then being there to support them on a regular basis. Awesome. So like you're helping with phones, computers, Alexa. Just exactly. Kind of technology around the house to make their life easier, especially in yep. these really tough times. Exactly. So primarily focused right now on smartphones, on tablets, laptops, and computers, but then also, as you mentioned, Alexa, so a lot of the voice recognition devices, and then starting to look at more smart home technology. So if people do need help thinking about or installing their, whether that's a fall detection device, home sensors, um, a lot of things now around remote patient monitoring and telemedicine, getting people on to telemedicine visits are things that we're, we're spending a lot of time on. Awesome. I mean, there's such a need. That's fantastic. So, okay. How in the world did you get into this and start this company? I mean, where'd the idea come from and tell us when and how you started and what happened? Yep, absolutely. Well, Skip, I know your background is working with a lot of entrepreneurs. So I've been an entrepreneur for over 20 years. I've started up and built businesses, everything from one of the first and what became the largest cell phone operators in Eastern Europe and in an ed tech business. And I also do a lot of work with helping um, mentor student entrepreneurs and, and women entrepreneurs. But this idea, I had actually been running a national nonprofit. I took a little detour from, from the tech startup world and I was running a national nonprofit called the Taproot Foundation. And we were connecting skilled volunteers in doing pro bono, all non-legal pro bono service. And we had built up a, a matching platform. When I left, we had about 35,000 volunteers. And I left there and I was thinking about, I really wanted to start a for-profit business, but something that had a social impact. And at the time, my father was in his late 80s, literally lived next door to a Best Buy. He was an early adopter. He was the guy first online at the Apple store, you know, buying, in fact, he bought me my first Alexa. He had AOL email way before I did. And, but as he got older, he had macular degeneration. He was hard of hearing manual dexterity issues, and then in the end, some, some cognitive decline. And the Apple Genius Bar and you know, Geek Squad just weren't cutting it for him anymore. And so one day I got a, a voicemail, which is still on my website, still, I had the, the foresight to save it. And he literally said, Alexia has gone out of town. And he said, I don't know where to find her. I don't know what to do. You know, I don't know who to call. What do I do? Call me back. And, I, you know, he, I saw that on your website. That's fantastic. And it's on my website. And he was a lawyer. And uh, as I said, his nickname was also Skip. So um, he was a lawyer and he was a pretty serious guy. So he didn't usually joke around with things like that. But I knew that he was incredibly frustrated and he was sort of half joking, but really not because he really didn't know who to call and, and what to do. And so, you know, again, he used to have Geek Squad on speed dial, but it just wasn't wasn't cutting it for him anymore. And so the light bulb kind of went off for me as I started looking at what are, you know, what's out there and what are the opportunities. And I realized that there really wasn't a, a service specifically working with this population that was patient, empathetic, explained things in a very clear way, very reassuring way, but at the same time was thinking about things like how do you set those accessibility features? How do you how do you explain things? So instead of saying, open up a browser window, you're saying, you see that little round thing with the, you know, with the compass on it, click on that. So that was really the beginning of Can Do Tech. That's awesome. You know, it's, it's funny. My mother is 90 years old now. And uh, because of the pandemic, she actually moved in with us uh, in end of March. She'd been in a high rise before. And she is not at all a tech. She's not into technology. I mean, she had a flip phone just to give you sort of the the world that yep. she's in. And Absolutely. my children forced her to not, she would not let us buy her an iPad or an iPhone or whatever, but they said, we're giving it to you. So she had no choice but to take it. 
and now it is her, her iPad is her absolutely favorite yeah. gadget, especially given the pandemic. So how do you kind of get, how do you get two people and how do you get them to sort of, you know, buy into what you're doing, both in the pre-COVID world and now in the COVID world where you can't even visit them and work with them one-on-one. -on -one. That's, that's a great, yeah. So I love your mom story. So happy that, that she felt empowered. That's exactly <laughs> what we're trying to do. And we've seen those stories over and over so much over the last few months. So pre-pandemic, we, we launched in February of last year, we were doing in-person visits in the New York tri-state area. And then I, you know, my original hypothesis was that you had to sit down next to someone and really be there to, to show them and, and be alongside of them. And then when the pandemic hit, we pretty quickly shut down all of our in-person visits and we moved to remote only. And we were, I was frankly quite concerned about how it was going to work, but actually it's ended up being for us, even though COVID has been horrible in so many ways, it's been really the tailwinds that we've needed to, to continue to, ex to scale and expand. So we're now completely remote. And we have been really successful. We use, we, we start with a phone call and then we get people onto our remote software. And so we can remote into either a tablet, a smartphone or a computer. And if we need to fix like a printer or a router, our software actually remote software will let us send a link and we can turn it into like a little mini um, video call. So we can actually see what what someone's seeing. And we've had really a lot of success and we've worked with everyone from people who are pretty sophisticated with their technology, but just you know need help when they need it to people like your mom, who we just, we helped someone in, in Florida recently, same thing, very sophisticated woman. She was an artist. She was a philanthropist on many different boards. She literally had never had an email and was still on a flip phone and she refused it. And then when her son finally sent her an iPad, and you know what it was? It was because her granddaughter was graduating. And she wanted to see it. And she, when there was a reason and a motivation, you know, whether it's to get onto a family holiday, to get onto an event, to participate in graduation, then all of a sudden it becomes an important, you know, window into that opportunity. And she did that. She got the iPad. We had our, our tech concierge was able to remote in. She did a series of lessons. And so she became a member. So we have a membership. So our, our members can do, we give them two 90 minute visits, lessons online, and then they can call us anytime for quick support. And so she calls us, you know, she calls us when she has to get onto a doctor's visit, when she has a Zoom call and she needs to remember how to turn on her camera. You know, she actually has a website now for her art and she, you know, we've taught her how to take pictures and upload her art. And she, it's completely transformed her life. And she's someone who absolutely refused, you know, anything other than her flip phone three months ago. You know, and that, that's sort of, that is one of the issues. I saw that with my mother. And I'm curious if you see that because it's almost like they don't want to do it themselves. Their kids kind of push them into it or maybe their grandkids. You know, how do they, how do they become aware of your service even? And, you know, is it, is it the, the older person or is it like one of the family members who might say, hey, we're going to do this for you so you can, you can take advantage of all this great technology. And again, given the pandemic, people are so socially isolated and so lonely. They really need the technological outreach. They they really do. So we work in two ways. We work directly with consumers and we are working with, with seniors themselves as well as their family members or caregivers. So sometimes it is, it's the older adult themselves who say, I don't want to bother my kids. You know, I need help. Don't even let them know that, that I'm calling you. And then sometimes it is the family member that says, I live, you know, and the average family member lives 200 miles away now. And, you know, even when they're around the corner, they can't very often get in to see them now. So we are, we're getting calls from both family members as well as, as from seniors. And then we're working a lot with enterprises. So senior living facilities, the AAAs, area offices on aging. So which, that would and, be the next question. If you're working with any of the tech companies or some of the nonprofits in we, this case, because there's such- We know. are, we are. And we're working with social service agencies. We have great partnerships um, in New York, for example, with a group called JASA, which has everything from their we're setting up tablets and bringing them into their palliative care and hospice clients where their caregivers as well as as clients are using them where we have a building we're working with them in brighton beach where it's all russian speaking wow. clients and their their residents again many of them have had no technology at all and all of a sudden they've never used it and they uh just just put wi-fi throughout this building and then we've set up google chromebooks and we're teaching people in Russian how to use those Chromebooks and then and then there to support them. So, 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 we're, 
Sorry. So it sounds like you're a little bit regional in the New York area, but you're also nation. You can go nationwide because of. No, we, yeah, we're nationwide. So with the triple A's, we're working in Ohio. We're working in Missouri. We're, we're working across the country and we've got uh, senior living facilities in California. And yeah, across, and we've got clients now. I mean, again, we are nationwide, but we're, I think we're up to like 24 states where we have, we have clients. So we can, and we have tech concierges across the country. So you know, part of our other mission is to provide um, really good, flexible, flexible jobs and um, both part time and full time. All our tech concierges are are W2. So they're they're background checked, of course, they're referenced, you know, safety is absolutely right. our number one concern. Um, but especially during this time in the pandemic, when so many people are out of work, we've actually doubled our, our workforce in the last few months. Awesome. Now, I looked on your website and maybe I got this wrong. But I think it said literally for uh, if you subscribe, it's fifteen dollars a month. How can you do it so cheaply? That seems incredible. <laughs> to me. Well, sign up all your family members. Okay. Um, yeah. So you know, we part of what happened was when the pandemic hit, we shut down our our in person and moved to remote only. So frankly, we've been you know experimenting. We wanted to make sure that 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 pricing was right and that you know the service was was right. So. Those prices will go up a little bit in, in 2021, but not by much. So, you know, for between 15 and, and 20, 20 something dollars a month, um, they will get uh, unlimited phone support. So unlimited quick support. So those are 30 minute or less. And then the two 90 minute sessions. And, you know, we're, we're able to do that. I mean, the 90 minute sessions are, are where people get, you know, that sort of real, the deep dive into what they need. And then the quick quick sessions can be anywhere from like, again, a five minute, oh my God, I forgot my password to, you know, to, to quick help. And then if they need additional help after that, they can, uh, you know, they can pay by, by hourly visits. Okay. So, so I teach entrepreneurship on the side, as I mentioned, up front, you mentioned, um, what were the, it's starting the business. What were the biggest challenges? You know, I always like to have entrepreneurs share that story of, you know, it, the idea sometimes is easy. The implementation is really hard. So maybe share what were some of the biggest challenges you had to overcome in getting the business started? Yeah, well, we, uh, you know, we started the business and then as we were just kind of ramping up, you know, we, I, I really use the lean startup methodology, right? So we kept a, you know, a small pilot going, we wanted to get out everything absolutely right. So we started out for the first six months with literally just 25 clients, you know, they were paying clients, but we really were working out all the kinks, you know, so we, we've sort of smoothed out the service, the training of our tech concierges. And then just as we were about to ramp up, you know, we had about, you know, 300 clients at the time and, and, uh, and just about to ramp everything up and then COVID hit. So, you know, that obviously threw a wrench into a lot, but I'm, I'm proud to say we've grown actually 240% just over the last few months and continuing to to really scale up but you know obviously building building culture and, and values to me is, is really critical and it's everything that drives the business you know we start the first thing that we tell people when they come in and, and we train them is here's our values you know and our values are treat people all stakeholders with respect and dignity make sure the customer is having an absolutely delightful experience and make sure they feel empowered by their technology and that there's a sense of connection and community. And so building those values in a remote setting with people, you know, some of our staff, we've literally never met right. in person. And so that, you know, that, that definitely creates, creates some challenges, but I'm really proud of our team. And, you know, I think we're, we're, we just actually had a team meeting yesterday and they were sharing some stories. Um, we have what we call can do moments. So we like to share, you know, these are moments when people feel excited by and empowered by something that they've learned, something new that they've learned or something that they've taught someone else. And so the team was really sharing these really beautiful stories of people who just had these can do moments and felt really empowered. You share, what's your favorite, what's your favorite one, Liz? You want to share your favorite can do story? Yeah, well, I'll tell you, um, we actually, I'll tell you one that just came up yesterday. So we had one of our tech concierges is a Broadway musician. Um, although he's unfortunately not working now on Broadway, but he he's a tech guy by day and then a Broadway musician by night. And so he was working with a client who was very hard of hearing, um, were able to you know connect hearing aids to a tablet, but his client was saying he couldn't, he was really frustrated on family Zoom meetings because he would get on and he couldn't quite hear what was going on and lots of people were speaking at the same time. And so we uh, we have we use special training, and so we had an audiologist come in and do a training session. And one of the things the audiologist taught the team was that there are certain 
technical uh, certain uh, video chats right now that have closed captionings, automated closed captionings. And so our tech concierge, Mike said, you know what, let's go ahead and we'll, we'll switch over to a Google meet, you know, just to try it out. And it had automatic closed captioning on it. And the guy all of a sudden went from not being able to hear or understand anyone and, you know, no, nothing on Zoom because I actually understand they're, they are working on it. But, uh, you know, it completely empowered him to change that experience. And he went from being really frustrated on his family, his weekly calls to being so excited because all of a sudden he could understand exactly what was going on. And he was like eager then to join those family meetings every week. Oh, that is awesome. That is fantastic. Okay, one last question. We're running out of time. Biggest challenge for the new year coming up. What what are you what are you what's your biggest challenge? And you've got an awesome business. And thank you, Liz, for being part of this. Yeah. So 2021 is all about growth. Um, you know, we have some really interesting opportunities. We just finished the Techstars Future of Longevity Accelerator. So that's a specific accelerator in partnership with Melinda Gates's Pivotal Ventures and focused on technology and longevity. And so, you know, coming out of that, we're we're sort of in a, a great position to really continue to scale. We're thinking a lot about how we can support telemedicine, telehealth, remote patient monitoring, um, looking at things like Medicare Advantage. You know, we really, in my mind, you know, you've got the technology here and that's what CES is all about. And I'm excited to see, you know, what, what new hardware is coming out. And then you've got, you know, the, the access to um, internet and broadband. And so there's a whole digital divide thing that we should talk about another time. And I know the foundation has been been so supportive of that. And then there's the content, right? So all the, the apps and the software and everything that's going on to the devices. But honestly, in our mind, if you don't have someone to set up that technology, show people how to use it, and then be there to support them on an ongoing basis, you know, we like to say you've got a very expensive paperweight. Right. And so, you know, 2021, we're really trying to encourage people to recognize that there is a, a really big need for that, you know, for that that piece of the setup and the and the support. And so just really looking to uh, to work with partners to make sure that that message is out there. Awesome. I, and I'm going to give a quick plug for the foundation because the foundation was created by CTA to focus on the elderly and disabled and make sure that technology really is out there for everyone and to help solve some of the issues of social isolation and loneliness. It's fantastic what you're doing, Liz, to, to bring it to a, a group of the elderly and hopefully we get a lot more of the elderly to use it. It's fantastic. So Liz from Can Do Technologies, thank you very much for sharing with us. Thank you so much.